Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going and taking a look at the M1 Finance weekly recap of the week from the 11th to the 15th of July 2022. We've had two past negative weeks with this week either being semi-negative or positive. We'll see here in just a few minutes. What we're going to be taking a look at today is taking a look at four areas. Number one, the overall performance of the M1 Finance portfolio. We have been very public, kind of showcasing the performance of the portfolio since inception back in 2018. Number two, we're going to be taking a look at the weekly performance of the portfolio. What stocks were up, what stocks were down. How did our portfolio compare versus the S&P 500? Then we're going to go into number three. We had a ton of dividends get paid out last week. So we're going to go ahead and cover what companies we're holding that paid out some dividends. And then number four, we're going to go ahead and take a look at where the portfolio currently sits at as far as dividend income. That is what the main focus of this portfolio is that we're just building up positions within our portfolio that are continuously paying out dividends on a weekly, monthly, yearly basis. And all of that is able to be reinvested back into the portfolio, you know, continuing to raise future dividends for the future and future and future. So with that said, if you guys are brand new here, definitely go down below, give it a big old thumbs up, subscribe if you have not yet subscribed, then let's go ahead and get into the video. So jumping over to M1 Finance, we can see here on Friday, the 15th of July, the market had a very nice rally here. Overall, S&P 500, 1.86 on the day, Dow Jones, 1.75, the NASDAQ, 1.78. Now jumping over into our portfolio, we can see here on Friday as well, we weren't up, you know, too hefty here. 0.77 on the day but we're going to be focusing on the overall and the weekly performance here so overall we're you know we've kind of moved back up over 47.47 percent that was a number that stuck with me two weeks ago and there was a time where we had actually fallen below 47.47 but we would actually move to the upside right now we can see that in our last video we were at sitting at 41806 and here we are at 41 570 so it looks to be matching where uh, you know the return kind of balance itself out back to be semi right <laughs> uh, but we can still see overall we're, we're net positive in market gains our earned dividends are continuing to rise we've almost broken now 3500 at the beginning of the year we broke the earned dividends of 3000 here we are about mid-year now breaking $3,500. So hopefully by the very end of 2022, we could potentially be breaking $4,000 of earned dividends, but that, uh, you know, we'll be fairly close to that amount. Looking at the performance of our portfolio, Pfizer did fall back a bit. Pfizer had been competing against Avi here around 120% gain. Uh, Pfizer did fall back from second, third place down to fifth place up 97.62% still. Avi remains very strong in the second place, followed right behind by Main Street Capital and Cisco Corp. Those are our best performers with Apple continuing to lead the way. That will probably never change. IRPR has moved down to the worst performing you know, uh, company that we own in our portfolio. This one took a beating this week, just a really, really heavy beating. A lot of the companies within the MJ industry overall are being very negative. Uh, we've had record low sales here where I'm located in Oregon as well. You know, people <laughs> they're just not focus on it. And the production uh, rentals within the, this is a REIT, so it's a, they rent out uh, buildings to do that sort of business. And, you know, they're having an issue with tenants, leases, and, you know, all the stuff that come with renting uh, industrial properties out for growers and such. So uh, IIPR is kind of taking a big hit there, nearly down 47% there. Clorox is in second place, but it has been rebounding very nice. At about 1686 Digital Realty Trust, another REIT down 25%. And then the list here kind of just goes into, you know, Stanley Black & Decker. This one, you know, I'm not going to talk too much about that one anymore. Uh, but I'm really excited to see JP Morgan here kind of in the list now, you know, negative overall. Then JP Morgan is still a position that I'm looking to add into. Uh, so here that it's negative overall in my portfolio is pretty positive for me as a long-term investor. 
JP Morgan's a great company. I have been using their services since I was probably in the third or fourth grade when it was Washington Mutual before it got overtaken by JP Morgan. Uh, so I've, I've been banking with them for a very long time. Very strong business like and have, you know, all, multiple business accounts running through them. Uh, so overall, I, I do believe that they're going to rebound over time, not only with their personal business, but uh, their mortgages. Everything's kind of in flux right now with raising rates. That should be beneficial for them. But they're having some issues or something. They, they have to do some stress tests and they have to actually pay fines and pay out a certain amount. So instead of doing buybacks, they had to cut back on their buybacks. They're continuing to you know pay their dividend but their buybacks instead of buying back their own companies are going to pay down these fines and stuff so jp morgan's going through a little bit of a rough patch there and that's why that one's kind of getting beat but long term hey you know i'll buy a little bit and average into it for the long term so that is the overall performance number one jumping over into number two the weekly performance now weekly wise we are down 0.54 percent on the week we did have some di earned dividends, which means earned dividends are not dividends that we have collected. Earned dividends are dividends that we sat through an ex-dividend date, and we will in the future earn these dividends. You know, we sat through the ex-dividend date, so we've earned the future potential for the companies to pay us out. Uh, that was $11.54 there. Overall here, we can see that our best performer has Clorox. Now this was our second place from the bottom as far as a loser, but it has been bouncing back very nicely, 5% on the week, followed up behind by WP Carry. This is a REIT, so it's pretty interesting to see a REIT down in second place as far as performance. Merck in third place, Apple, nice, very nice, you know, nice little bounce there in fourth place in the portfolio. And then the list kind of trails on our worst performance. You can see there's quite a bit of red here. Now, IIPR is the one we kind of discussed a little bit earlier, down 16.5% in a single week. Uh, so it's been hit really, really hard uh, in, in, the, in the recent times. Uh, so Sigi Selective Insurance down 6.31%. Lockheed Martin, 5.23%. Digital Realty Trust. Another read there we kind of talked about, it's in one of the, uh, you know, a lot of these names right here are also in the negative as far as the red, right? We had industrial, uh, innovative industrial properties was in the red heavy, digital realty trusts, Stanley Black and Decker, JP Morgan, uh, Starbucks, waste management. These are positions that are just in the red overall in the portfolio. So they're just not taking a liking to at the moment. Uh, but overall, we're down 0.54 on the week, which is actually surprising, even though we had a pretty hard hit there with IIPR. So the S&P 500 on the week is down 0.93%. The Dow Jones didn't take much of a beating here. Actually, you know, but the majority of its beatdown got uh, happened on Wednesday. Big drop on open on Thursday, but you can see that very nice recovery throughout the day. And on Friday, very, very nice recovery. Essentially wiped out all of the Monday through Thursday and put on a 2.15% uh, gain to end the week down only 0.16%. So that was very, very good there on, on the week there. And if we jump over to the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ here tried to finish strong for the week, up 0.179%. But overall, it was just a lot of negativity there on Monday, that drag of 2.3% on to the downside. So overall, five-day change down 1.57%. And we can see here on the heat map, some of the big players this week that, you know, this is the one-week performance. So one-week-wise, we had Microsoft down 4.09%. Google, McDougal. Uh, over with YouTube and, down, and such, down 6.16. The uh, Meta, Meta here, man, they've been down so much this year. I own, uh, Meta's probably my second biggest position, single player position, uh, you know, and Meta has been hit very, very hard. I'm actually deciding between kind of taking profits in some positions and averaging more on uh, Meta overall. Because it is priced right now at $164. That is crazy to see that not too long ago, not even probably a year ago, it was priced at around $370. So it has dropped dramatically to the point where, hey, Facebook is doing a lot of positive out there, I believe. Uh, I, I've been um, using some of their services over, you know, streaming on Facebook and stuff. 
and a lot of their platform are just continuing to do means along those areas and then we have amazon down 1.72 percent on the week followed right behind by tesla tesla's at 720 dollars it's almost taking a 50 percent cut from its highs of around 1200 bucks or so I don't, I don't have a chart in front of me of tesla but i know they have taken a huge chunk oil overall is beginning to come down off those highs very sharply you can see you know every day i'm always reading a new article how oil is now on its you know 30 consecutive day of being in the negative and that's just just because oil you can see the kind of trend on the left there next to exxon overall exxon chevron oil and energy have just been on the negative downtrend here uh, for quite a while jp morgan was the only one that really got hit here within the last week within the financials you can see overall bank of america wells fargo city bank uh, city group are all pretty positive on the week whereas jp morgan they just had uh you know existential financial things that they had to kind of take care of and that's what kind of hit them pretty hard uh but overall you can see why the nasdaq here uh, nasdaq was down a little bit harder right 1.57 that's because a lot of the red this week was within those tech companies so the dow jones didn't get affected too much by that whereas the s p 500 did take a little bit of an effect and so did the nasdaq they're taking more more of the blunt end of the uh the tech companies there uh so that is the weekly performance here now jumping into number three the activity of the week now i thought i had made a video this past week going over companies that i was deciding to buy but i didn't end up making any sort of purchasing we can see that the last time i purchased anything was back in june 27th so and it has actually been almost a month since i bought anything in the market and there has been a bit of an uptick so if we take a look here over the past say three months we don't have to go back that far uh, we did bottom out about mid june right you can see this big you know it's been trailing for the last six months let's just look at the last six months really quickly and we'll look at the performance uh, but this started let's just look at year to date right so this started at the beginning of the year this all started happening so we had that high back on january 2022 early on and then we just sold off very sharply now we didn't start selling off right we tried to recover and it looked like some sort of recovery but it failed again dropped a little bit lower than that past low and continued to do that once again there was again some sort of recovery actually higher than the previous recovery but then that just meant hey we're gonna fall even further and faster and that second bottom was a little bit lower so uh, we've had two double bottoms with a lower double bottom on that back end kind of dragging it down here though if you take a look at just over the last few months here uh, june we had that lowest bottoming out period that we've seen in quite a while and then we try you know we didn't you know, this is considered a double bottom here or a triple bottom whatever uh, but here we didn't actually fall to a lower low so surprisingly we are making some sort of recovery now 392 is acting as resistance but if the market can make some sort of recovery during earnings season saying earnings hey we know the feds raising rates they're going to raise in another uh three quarters of a percent this is affecting our bottom line but we're going to eat it we're going to go through it we're expecting a little bit lower you know guidance and such like that that might look more positive uh you know just to kind of that we're battling inflation or combating inflation and stuff is working out uh we could maybe potentially see an uptick over 392 if we can close above it and begin trending higher that may show signs of um you know market recovery but if we cannot break above it and we do end up trailing below it we can see here that the last time that there was any sort of support was back in august of 2020 so we would have to go back nearly a year uh two years right 2020 august 2020 uh that's nearly two years so we can see that the net change as of this point is around 11.92 percent so we could potentially still fall about 10 percent and kind of be within this range i don't know the um the price of the s p 500 right around there but i've seen a lot of other talk as well if we can't go past and close about 50 day moving average and then kind of trail up towards the 200 day and you know earnings is guiding much lower they're you know projecting much lower uh, guidance and lowering revenue they're not coming in that could 
potentially bring the market down another 10 or so percent. But we shall see. So I really haven't purchased anything in this couple months, you know, nearly a month here. I'm really just kind of not really waiting it out, but it just kind of forgot is what I happened, <laughs> you know, what happened to me. Uh, but we did have some dividends roll in here. So if I go ahead and pop up my calculator here on the side, we can see Essex Property Trust paid us $3.32, followed up behind by IIPR, a whopping $19.33. Doesn't help that they're down nearly 50%, right? Uh, we had 16 cents for Main Street Capital with that additional 839 up there at the top. Then we had Realty Income. This is a monthly REIT paying out $6.80. And then we had WP Carry paying out a whopping uh, $21.78. So in one week, we generated $68.78 in dividends. Now this right here is nearly three times what our portfolio would accumulate in a month of dividends back when it was created. So the fact that it's making, you know, 70 to $100 on a weekly basis sometimes is very strong. And, you know, that's going to go into number four, where we go ahead and cover where our portfolio is currently uh, paying overall. So let's go ahead and head back over into our holdings here. Our cost basis, this is what dividends re-included. So our cost basis, you can't really look at how much we've actually invested as the cost basis because we haven't actually put into our portfolio a whopping $38,000, right? We've actually invested roughly, there's uh, six times three is 18 with the 11, that's 29 and then uh, 32,000. So we've invested roughly $32,000 of our own cash that's thirty-two thousand of you know capital that we've deposited into these roth iras and our cost basis is thirty-eight thousand. so there's about six thousand dollars of dividends that have been paid out in that has been reinvested into companies you know our dividends that were paid out it's kind of like ghost money those dividends were reinvested into companies to buy back more shares those shares that we bought with dividends then paid their own dividends and this has just been kind of a compounding, right? That's the whole compounding effect. There's a lot of capital in there. That's part of the cost basis. That was not actually part of our initial $32,000 that we funded this account with. So it's kind of nice to see that ghost money really being put to work. So over here, we have um, trackyourdividends.com. This is a free website to use. This is what I use to track my yield, my yield on cost, my annual income. So here we can see that the portfolio is sitting at 41571 So right here we can see the value at 41570 You round this up by one cent, it's at 71 So it is a fairly accurate portfolio tracker. And we can see here that our annual income right now is $1,223. So not too long ago, we broke $1,000, then we broke $1,100. We made a video recently where we broke $1,200. So we're on the uptrend to break $1,300 of annual income. And this is all just being able to be reinvested back into our Roth IRA without going against the contribution limit. So we're already... Um, producing one sixth of our contribution limit per year within the portfolio and that is able to be reinvested into our uh, portfolio completely for free and you can see that our best for uh, our best annual income you know payers uh, main street capital at 102 dollars break that up per month as about a ten dollars and 25 cents per month that they pay out monthly they're a monthly paying company Realty income is another monthly one. They pay out eighty-one fifty-six, or you know, you divide that by twelve, and that's going to be, I don't know, uh, like nine, ten dollars per month there. And then just the list kind of trails on, and we are continuing to average into specific positions, which overall increases our annual income, you know, on a weekly basis. Now we do have four hundred and eighty-three dollars and seventy-seven cents to invest. We're now about halfway invested for the year. Here we are in July. Yeah, we're July 2022. Uh, we've invested roughly $3,000, you know, funded the account. So we have another $3,000 that we can fund this account with. Now, if we believe that this is where the bottom's at, we can, you know, do a one-time contribution, just max out the Roth IRA and just, you know, stick it in the positions that have been beat down quite a bit. Uh, but I really like the idea of just continuing to dollar cost average into this portfolio. I'm not in any hurry to just 
lump sum invest right now. I like looking for opportunity and right now there's a lot of opportunity out there in the market. So uh, with that being said, we have covered number one, the overall performance of the portfolio. Number two, we've covered the weekly performance in comparison to the S&P 500, Dow Jones, NASDAQ. Number three, we went over the activity, you know, what we're looking at here in the market overall. We could potentially fall on another about 10, 11% to the downside if we are not able to break over that 50 day moving average. But if we can break above it, you know, earnings begins to come in better than expected. Fed's gonna raise rates at three quarters of a percent, which is expected. That's gonna be the last raise of the year. Uh, hopefully, if they don't make any further, uh, you know, additional increases, that will work out in in our favor because that's what's expected. And during earnings season and third quarter, fourth quarter, they'll come out saying, "Hey, looks like prices are beginning to kind of stabilize. People aren't spending as much. Inflation's kind of getting a little bit lower." And that could be better for the market overall. So we could potentially break above that 50-day close and continue uptrending from there. So anything can happen right now. Uh, you know, that's sort of the uh, the trend out there in the market. So that is going to be it from me, you guys. If you guys did appreciate this video, looking, you know, the transparency of everything we're doing on a weekly basis, definitely let me know down in the comment section below. I will be out of town. We're actually traveling overseas over the next two weeks. Uh, so I will be out of country and probably won't be posting anything. Uh, but if you do follow me over on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, I sometimes pop, you know, post some little videos. We're going to be visiting Germany. So if you guys have, you know, been over that way, <laughs> drop me a hello. But otherwise, that is going to be it for me this video. I appreciate everyone out there taking a look, checking out the video, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>